The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Wah here from Mr. Wah Media, and yes, that is my actual name. Today's episode, a fan requested one. Mitch asked us, how do I build trenches? Throughout human history, we have partaken in some brutal trench warfare, whether it was sieges in medieval times or the world wars. And not even in our real world. Think of the Galactic Empire versus the rebels on an ice planet. Whatever the setting may be, we're going to show you how to build these defensive positions for your soldiers. Let's get started. As with most of our builds, we're going to start with our foundation. Most trench pieces should be about 6 to 7 inches long and about 3 inches wide. This is going to give us ample space to put the soldiers down, whether they're mounted on 25 bases or the 32s. Anything bigger than that, like the 40 millimeters, might be a little bit more tricky, but that's up to you how thick you want to make these. Once I've got the cardboard cut out, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the styrofoam. That way we have a two-piece base that should be firm enough for most models. For the next step, we're going to use the pink styrofoam. This will run the entire length of the panel that we've made, so that'll be 7 inches in my case, and it'll be 1.5 inches wide. This particular styrofoam is half an inch thick, that's usually my go-to, and we're going to need two of these strips. So I'm going to make my cut as clean and precise as I can here, break it off uh, where I need it, and then I'm just going to trace out a second piece. I'll cut that one out as well, and uh, we'll go from there. After letting the hot glue gun heat up a little bit, we're going to now mount the styrofoam onto the cardboard, make sure it's on there nice and firmly, and then we're going to attach the rest of the styrofoam onto the sheet. Make sure you add a nice thick glob on there to really hold it in place. We're going to need to be cutting into this, and you don't want it to be falling apart. So especially with the second one here, that's where the blade's going to be going through, so make sure that's on there nice and tight. With a sharp, clean blade, we're going to carefully cut at a roughly 45 degree angle in a wavy pattern. I'll then chop off about a quarter inch from the top, that way the models can look over it. One inch is a little bit too high for some infantry. And I'll just keep hacking away at this, removing any hard edges, and just go to town with this, you know? Make it look a little interesting, put some waves in it, make it look battle damaged, and uh, yeah, we'll just go on to the next step. Alright, I'm not going to lie, the next step is a little bit more time consuming, a little bit more boring, so that's why it's going at triple speed. We're going to take some coffee stir sticks and break them off at different lengths. Uh, the average stir stick yields about maybe two or three planks, uh, depending on how short you break them off. And we're going to lay them down on the ground here in a hardwood floor pattern. How complicated you make it, that's totally up to you. But once you have your planks, we're going to start gluing them in place. I'm using the hot glue gun, but you only have a few seconds to get them into place before it hardens. I might recommend using the white glue, just so you have a little bit more time to manipulate the planks. But, as you can see, I'm just laying them down in different patterns here, and once everything is in place, I'll cut off all the leftover bits that are hanging over the edge. Just be careful with the blade, and trim them off like so. And from there, we're done with the floor. For the next part of this boring segment, we're going to start harvesting some planks for the walls. We're going to make each plank about one inch tall, though some will be a little bit taller and some will be a little bit shorter. Uh, makes it look interesting as if maybe it's taken some battle damage, some blasts or cannons, artillery, that sort of thing. But once you have them all harvested, we'll start gluing them into place. I usually will recommend, again, the white glue. I'm using the hot glue gun just so I can get through it a little bit quicker, but um, if you want to have a little bit more uh, flexibility and more time to put them in place, definitely go with the white glue. The only thing I don't recommend is crazy glue or super glue because that will devour the styrofoam. It'll just melt it. So, uh, yeah, don't use that stuff. And once that's all in place, we have this really cool-looking wooden trench. I'll slow it down here a little bit so you can get a better look at it. And uh, as you can see, it's not overly complicated, and so far, we're making really good time. For the next step, we're going to take some white glue and spread it across the entire outer surface, all the way from the base up into the wooden planks. Once you've got a good layer down, we're going to go back in with some sand and sprinkle it across the entire surface. And if you make any mistakes, just go back in with a couple globs of glue and patch it as you see fit, shake off the excess, and with that, we are now done the assembly of a single panel. 
All right, it is now time to start painting this thing, and if you've seen my previous work, you probably know what's coming first. We're going to put down a thick layer of black acrylic paint as our primer. Uh, make sure you lay it on there really thick, get in all the nooks and crannies, and of course this will take the longest to dry next to the, uh, the glue and the sand that we just lay down. But uh, yeah, not much to really say on this one. It's just me slapping some, uh, some black paint all over this thing. Yeah riveting stuff but for whatever reason you're still watching so obviously it's somewhat exciting i guess you're literally watching paint dry for the next step though it's going to be one part black one part brown and i'm gonna slap it on the outer surface here a little haphazardly as for the planks on the interior if you want to see a good technique for painting uh wooden effects check out the link above and i did a couple different uh tutorials on that one but for now i'm just slapping it across here uh pretty liberally across the entire surface and uh, I'll wait for the entire piece to dry. All right, for our next step, we're gonna take some generic brown here and we're gonna dry brush it across the outer surface. This is the exact same technique I use on the dungeon tiles when it came to the floors and when I was doing the base of the Ruins series. Uh, not overly complicated, we just dry brush it across the surface, not quite as heavy as we did the first coat, but not as light as I'm out to do on the, um, on the planks. Um, yeah, not really anything going on here. I'm just going to slap it across the planks here. You'll notice that when you're doing a surface like this, like an L shape, uh, if you're doing the walls, some of the paint will end up on the floor. When you're doing the floor, some of the paint's going to end up on the walls. So just be prepared to uh, wipe it and dry brush it in and sort of blend it while it's still wet there. You'll sort of get the hang of it as you do this over and over. We're going to do about three or four layers of different colors I think so by the time you get to the final layer uh, you guys should be experts at this. Next up we're going to take some golden yellow color and mix it in with the brown color and uh, once again we're going to dry brush on the outer surface a little bit heavier than we will on the planks. Not overly complicated nothing really interesting here once again you are literally watching paint dry. What does that say about you guys? Is that, is that worse about me or you guys? I mean, at least I'm getting something out of this. I'm, I got a beautiful table that I'm working on. You guys are just watching some lunatic talking to himself and painting. While the paint is still wet on the palette and my sanity is slowly slipping out of my brain, I'm going to add a little bit of white to the mix. This will give us a nice light sand color. Now I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I'm going to paint this thing with it. I know, shocking, surprising, no one saw it coming. But yes, once again, I'm going to brush it across the entire surface. And just like the paint color, my brush strokes are gradually getting lighter and lighter. At this point, I'm just barely dusting it across the surface here just to catch the outer edges and uh, really make the grains really come to life. The outer surface, eh, not so much. I'm not worried about that one. But uh, I gotta say, these floorboards are really coming together. As we continue tumbling down this rabbit hole and pass even Alice, we're gonna lay down a thick coat here of Agrax Earthshade across the outer surface. As for the inner planks, I'm going to apply it in random patches here and there. Uh, relatively thick in some, and others might just get a little bit of a grazing. Once that's out of the way, I'm going to go back in with some null oil, also from Citadel. I'm going to apply new patches here and there to really break up this pattern and give it a worn down and rugged look. As our adventure begins to wind down, we're going to do the final paint step. We'll take some pure white and dry brush it across the surface. At this point, there's hardly anything in the bristles. It's just a very, very light dusting. And this is just going to help enunciate all the grains and the wood and just really make everything pop. This last decision to add a little bit of flock to the outside of the trench is purely an artistic one. Realistically, there would be very little vegetation growing on the side of the trench. If you look at classic pictures of trench warfare, especially from the World Wars, it was all one muted color of just grays and browns. Very little vegetation could actually survive in this kind of environment from the constant shell bombardments and soldiers running across it. But for me, because I game on a uh, tundra kind of mat, it has a lot of greens and browns in it, it would just look too jarring. So for me, adding the little bit of green here ties it all together, and it won't look out of place when I throw it down to game with. As you can see here, I think it looks quite good. And the contrast between the wooden planks and the gaming surface, it's not too jarring. 
And as long as you use the same color palette from all your pieces, from the trenches to ruins to other scenery, it'll give it a nice coherent look, especially when you start putting down your own model pieces. These ones here, my very first models I ever bought. My high elves from over 25 years ago are ready to lay their lives down in the trench. Now you might be asking, what about corner pieces? Well, this is actually relatively straightforward. We're going to follow the exact same steps as before, except this time it's going to be 3 inches by 3 inches for the base, and we're going to glue two pieces of styrofoam across the entire surface. Then we'll take the knife and cut out 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch in the corner, that way we can lay down our floorboards and the walls respectively. For the outside, we're going to cut in a circular motion from one corner to the other, and that way it lines up with the edge. Overall, I feel this is a relatively straightforward build and didn't really warrant its own video, and I'm sure you guys will get the hang of it once you do some experimentation. With that said and done though, let's actually put these things to the test. Well, that's been today's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure you hit the like, the share, subscribe down below, and please pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build this from the ground up. And if there's anything that you want me to build in an upcoming episode, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe we'll be able to build it in the future. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media. I hope you were thoroughly entertained. Please tell me I need to know